today when things fall apart Again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics, where well, that is post covering finance and property news. Well, according to the AFR, work ratification orders have been issued on more than 30 New South Wales apartment blocks, while State Building Commissioner David Chandler warns that as many as five buildings could face the fate of Mascot Towers, where residents were forced to evacuate four years ago. The vast majority of apartment buildings slugged with ratification orders were flagged back in 2023, with only five from last year. Mr Chandler warned last week that as many as five apartment blocks in New South Wales potentially faced forced evacuation because their corporations did not ask for help with defects before it was too late. The Building Commissioner also issued continued occupation protocols which allow residents to stay in their homes while their buildings are being made safe. On Wednesday, Mr Chandler confirmed there were a few apartment blocks with known risks but would not identify specific buildings. We're unable to provide locations of individual buildings, he told the Australian Financial Review. Only one building is currently under continued occupation protocols. Tenants Union New South Wales boss Leo Patterson Ross, who represents tenants who have lived in shoddy buildings, said Mr Chandler was likely referring to buildings that are under investigation and had received work rectification orders. I'm confident he wouldn't be holding back from making those orders from places that he thinks are so serious that some are almost in imminent collapse, Mr Patterson Ross said. The Building Commissioner only issues work ratification orders for buildings which are found to have serious defects that are likely to cause collapse, destruction or become uninhabitable. Apartment buildings with orders include the Vicinity Complex in southwest Sydney's Canterbury, whose developer Toplace has gone into administration and has received various rectification orders which identified load-bearing beams on its ground and first floor that are at risk of collapse. Another complex with rectification orders is the laneways in Rosebury, which has load-bearing walls, a staircase and a car park ramp that are at risk of collapse. Owners of apartments in the laneways have received orders from the New South government that prevent them from living in the complex. Another apartment complex in Ryde was found to have uncontrolled cracking, which affected the building's structural systems. University of New South Wales City Futures Research Centre, Dr Laura Cromelin, said that the number of apartment buildings at risk of collapse flagged by Mr Chandler was not surprising given that based on a conservative estimate, one in four apartments built from 2008 to 2017 had structure-related defects. And she said the number of apartments that are flagged with serious defects was also expected to grow. One of the things with defects is it often takes a while for people to become aware of them. Part of the issue is that they don't necessarily present themselves immediately so something could be leaking inside the walls and take a couple of years for that to build up to the point that they become visible, she said. Leith Dawes, an apartment owner in the vicinity complex, called for the New South Wales government to offer a buyback scheme if cost ballooned. Mr Dawes said the New South Wales government needed to step in with support as the work ratification orders issued against Toplace have not been effective. Toplace treats the orders like toilet paper, he said. Toplace has largely ignored measures enforced by the building commissioner so far, despite the risk of the building collapsing, being flagged almost two years ago. And Mr Dawes, who moved out of the building in March, due to the stress of living in an unstable building and strata committee disagreements, said he was worried that vicinity apartment owners would have to foot the entire repair bill which is expected to range from $12 million to $50 million. And Mr Dawes said he and other residents were unsure if they could afford to pay mortgages along with the estimated rectification costs. If rectification costs were to balloon, he said the New South Wales government should establish a buyback scheme that was similar 
to one for the Lismore flood victims. Owners of Mascot Towers apartments earlier in this year pushed the New South Wales government to establish such a scheme. So once again, we see above the waterline further stories of poor apartment construction and significant risks to those living in those or wanting to live in them and also massive costs. This is because the whole building supervision program across the country, but particularly in New South Wales, is an absolute mess, as Edwin and I have been discussing recently. And as I say, this is just above the waterline. The question is how many other apartments across the country are defective and how many owners potentially are up for big bills that they have no visibility of. And whilst I understand the thought that people should be bailed out by the state government, the bottom line is that the whole process is broken. We need to change the way that buildings are inspected and supervised during construction. And specifically, we need to make sure that in fact, the building is built in line with the specifications and corners are not cut. The bottom line, of course, at the moment with builders going out of business left, right and centre, and with the cost of materials a big issue and supply a big issue, there are many corners being cut in current projects. But as the earlier commentator made the point of underscoring, faults don't shop on day one necessarily, and it can take a few weeks or months or even years for the true effect of the defects to show through. So we wonder how many other people are sitting in apartments that are going to fall apart. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.